tell me to do the dishes. And I would, begrudgingly, eventually. While I was doing them, I would daydream about robots doing all the chores in the house so that I could do something much more interesting. I would think about all the things that I could do when I grew up. I could make nanobots to keep our arteries clear. I could be a neurosurgeon and operate on people's brains. I could be a geneticist and clone organisms. I thought about the internet. It was so easy and useful at accessing all this information from around the world, even on the outskirts of the world in regional far north Queensland. It just didn't make sense to me that we had all this computer processing power available and we weren't using it to move mechanical systems in the world, in the home. I thought, let's use this to move physical systems to help us in the physical world. It was the early 2000s and there was so much I wanted to do. But I was 12. I would stay up crying. I would think, I don't want this rev robotics revolution to take off without me. But then I'd think, I haven't finished high school yet. I haven't finished uni yet. Please robots, please don't take off without me. While I was studying my engineering degree, I met Jessica Evans. Jess was studying at uni. She sings in a band. She's starting her own theatre production company. And she's had quadriplegia since she was one. This means that she has no mobility in her legs and she has only very limited mobility in her arms. She can only nudge her elbow this much. She controls her wheelchair using her head. This means tasks that I find simple, she's unable to do. She can't pick up a tissue from the ground. She can't go to the fridge and get a drink. She can't even scratch her own eyebrow. And Jess isn't the only one. A study by the Christopher and Dana Ree Foundation found that one out of 50 Americans have some form of paralysis. That's six million people in the United States alone. So I decided to make a wheelchair mounted robotic arm. And I named it Jeeva after Jessica Evans. I went and spoke to 200 people with paralysis to find out what they actually wanted. They said they wanted something aesthetic, and so we gave Jeeva these curves. They said they wanted something that was discreet, and so we made it so that the robot could fold up out of the way by the side of someone's wheelchair. And they said that they wanted something that was functional, so we created control interfaces on iOS, Android, and using gyroscopic head movements. We gave it three types of functionality. Relative motion, grid control, recordings. Relative motion is robot up, down, left, right, forwards, backwards, grip and rotate, wrist up, wrist down. Getting all of that to work without shredding the wires was really hard. I went to the homes of people with a disability to find out how they use their computers. They say grid on and a grid overlay appears on the screen, enumerated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They say 4, and the mouse goes to the middle of the 4 rectangle. They say grid off, grid disappears. They say down 10, mouse goes down 10 pixels. They say left, and the mouse keeps going left until they say stop. Then they say click. The robot arm exists in three-dimensional space. So our system has grid, but it also has depth. So if the robot arm is tucked away by the side of a chair and someone wants to open a door and the handle's over here, all they have to do is select a point in grid, select a depth, and instantly the robot arm goes there by itself. And then you can use relative motion in order to manipulate this robot arm to open the door. Recordings enables people to save their favorite movements for the robot to do over and over again. So for example, a caregiver could give the robot arm a spoon and then teach it that position one is spoon and soup bowl and position two is near that person's mouth. And so that person can then press play on repeat really quickly if they're really hungry, or they can press pause if they want their soup to cool down a bit before eating it, or stop 
if they want to engage in conversation with their family and friends. Jess, when she goes to the bank, puts a pen in her mouth and draws an X sign in order to sign her name. With Jiva, Jess can get her caregiver to teach Jiva a symbol that she really enjoys. So whenever Jess is out and about, Jiva can do that symbol and sign her signature. Following on from creating this, I thought it would be so useful if Jiva had its own movable platform so that it could be useful to everyone, not just people who are in a wheelchair. For example, my house is a bit messy and I would love a robot arm to help me keep it tidy. So I created Teleport. Uh, teleport enables people to teleport from one place to another instantaneously. And so with Teleport, you can move forward, you can have it turn left, right, and even have it go up and down. It goes as high as 1.7 meters, which is taller than me. And so my friends say that I only created Teleport so that I'd appear taller to people who haven't met me yet. It goes all the way down to 1.1 meters, which makes it really easy to stow away in a car or in a plane compartment so you can transport it around. It uses its front forward-facing camera and a floor-facing camera so that it's really easy to navigate and it doesn't run into people's feet. But if you get distracted, there's ultrasonic sensors on the front and back to ensure that teleport doesn't run into any obstacles. Our users tell us that the experience of teleporting is 100% better and much more immersive than they could have imagined. They liked that they can control where they go, who they talk to, where they look. CEOs and managers who travel could have a teleport in their office and so if they're interstate at a conference or meeting, they can continue to know what's going on in the office. Employees who telecommute can interact with their colleagues much more frequently. Companies with multiple offices in a city, country or the world can enable their employees to teleport from one office to another in the same day, saving thousands on plane fees and, air and hotel fees. Caregivers can use a teleport to monitor people with disabilities or the elderly. It's really simple to use through a browser or a phone. I thought about people with paralysis like Jess and how maybe something like this could mean that people who are bedridden or locked in could go to the museum or the art gallery. Kids who are sick in hospital could still go to school or could mean that someone who has an injury uh, could participate in the workforce during the day and participate in family life at night, all the while undergoing rehabilitation. And so I decided to create a brain-controlled interface for Teleport. So all you have to do is focus and Teleport moves forward. You blink twice to toggle between the different commands and tele teleport turns. My next robot will combine the brain controlled teleport with the robotic arm. Today, robot arms that autonomously do everyday tasks already exist using machine learning. In the future, Robots will be the primary caregivers to all of us, look after our built environment, perform surgeries autonomously, anything we imagine we can create. I made it. I'm part of the robotics revolution. I shouldn't have been scared about missing out on the robotics revolution when I was a kid. It's just getting started and I invite all of you to join in. This is just the beginning. Thank you.